Three. Okay. Excuse me while I put this thing in my back pocket. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, hi, people. Welcome. And I'm gonna start off today um, on my talk, which the title you can see here. Uh, but what really, what I'm really gonna talk about is, you know, what do we do as front-end web engineers? So before we start, let's take a quick poll here. Like, how many people here consider themselves? Uh, programmers or engineers? Anybody? Okay. So you've done like, some, pro some programming, maybe you've worked in a technical role. Uh, how many of you consider yourselves uh, web engineers or web developers? Okay, a few. Uh, <laughs> which is like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so today's talk is actually more for people who are not already uh, front end web engineers. Maybe you are a back end web engineer or full stack, uh, but today's talk is really just focusing on you know, what it is that front end web engineers do, uh, what it's like, uh, some of the really gnarly things that we deal with, uh, but also some of the really cool things that we do. So if uh, you're not a front end web engineer, this talk is for you. If you are, will not be offended if you have to take a toilet break. So we're going to start. Um, so my name is Sherman. Um, I'm actually a Malaysian. Yeah, <laughs> don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by this. I know. I, <laughs> uh, a lot of people think I'm Singaporean, but I'm not. Um, and I'm currently a front-end web engineer at Vicky, which is uh, where we are hosting this event right now. And uh, what I do is front-end web engineering things. And what exactly is a front-end web engineer? What do we do? Like you know, it's such a mouthful, front-end web engineer. Um, uh, some of the other terms that you might have heard that sound similar are like you know web developer, web designer, backend web engineer, full stack web engineer, UI engineer, UI UX developer, so on and so forth. Um, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to be using the terms engineer and developer interchangeably. And you just have to know that all these terms are really uh, refer to different specializations in a larger subset that I just call front end web. Uh, so yeah, it's. It's, it can be kind of confusing at times because people use different terms, but generally we ref there are some differences, but generally we refer to the same thing. So uh, to s define what a front-end web engineer is, we talk about what a web engineer is. Uh, and a web engineer is someone who builds, designs, maintains things for the web. And the web in this case refers to the World Wide Web, which a lot of us are familiar with in terms of you know websites. Like, you know, who has visited a website today in the past five minutes? Facebook, who, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but the tricky part comes in, in uh, talking about, you know, what is, uh, what does front end refer to? Um, and in order to talk about, you know, what front end is, we need to talk about how the web works. So is that, is that like a back end? Is that like a middle end? <laughs> we don't know. Um, so think about, a website, like when you visit a website, you pull up a browser, let's say Chrome, um, Edge, Firefox, and then you type in a URL. So in this case, if I want to visit Wiki, which I do every day because this is what I work on, I go to like, you know, www.wiki.com, I hit enter, a website appears magically from somewhere. We don't know where. <laughs> and so what really happens is that there's you, here's you, and your browser, which is in your machine, and then there's a server. So when you enter like you know www.wiki.com in your browser, uh, your machine or your browser is responsible for looking up the wiki server and sends a request to the server, say, "Hey, I need this wiki website thing. What do I need to like display this website?" And so the server will be like, "Okay, hey, cool, I got you." And the server runs some code and to get the assets that you need to in order to display this website. So the server's like, hey, all right, uh, here's all the stuff that you need. And it sends a response back to you, uh, or really your browser. And the response may include things like you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Like, have people heard of these terms before? Kind of, I see not, yeah. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, that's, that's like her life, you know. Um, and so what happens is that the browser takes this response, this HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and uses that to create or render your website. So the important thing to note is that it's not that the server you know, builds this website for you, you know, every, colors and fonts and everything, and sends it to your browser. The, what we really have here is like all this HTML, CSS, JavaScript code, which is like, you can think of it as a bunch of rules on how to display your website. And that bunch of rules gets sent to your browser, and your browser runs it to show you the website that you see. So um, with that said, it's kind of interesting because <coughs> I like to think of front-end web as bridging the gap between users and content. 
uh, actually credits, credits to like uh, Jason for this here. And what it really means is that usually when you visit a website, you are there for a reason. You're there for content, you're there to check email, there to like watch cat videos. And what front end does is that uh, we are really talking about all this stuff that happens here on this site, like whatever is related to the user, the browser, and what the browser needs to display your website. So it's really creating, a, like for example, a website that makes it easy for users to access their content. So that's just a way that I like to think about front-end web. And because you know, we are dealing with users, we also need to understand how design works. There's a very like, human interaction element to it. And it may include things like, you know, what makes it easy for a user to read this article? What makes it easy for this user to like, find episodes? So we have to keep that design mindset there. But at the same time, we also have to work with technology because we are dealing with browsers. And browsers can be difficult, which I will talk about later. Um, and this combination, to me, is something that's like pretty special to front-end web. And you don't get it in necessarily in other fields of software engineering or as much. Uh, I believe mobile is also like, it has a similar marriage of like design and technology. So I think it's, it's something that's really special to front-end web. All right, so um, I'm going to be talking about the two parts. So I'll talk about like, you know, what goes on in the design side. Uh, how do features get created from, you know, from the designer to the actual product, to the actual website itself. And I'll also talk about the technology that we deal with. Like, for example, browsers. Like, why are browsers so difficult? Why, do, if you have friends who are front-end web engineers, like, why do they complain so much about IE8? You know, things like that. <laughs> or, yeah, or like, um, so yeah, I'm gonna start off with design. So, in the front-end web world, uh, what typically happens a lot is that we are required to build features. So, um, Let's say we want to revamp a sign, up, sign, up, sign up page. Um, and what happens is that we usually work with designers. Um, and designers will come up with a mock of how they want the design or the feature to look like. And from that, it's our responsibility to take that flat image, which is usually created um, in Sketch, Photoshop, Illustrator, and convert that into code that achieves the same effect. So um, like, you know. One of the examples that I worked on recently was to re, uh, rehaul our login page. So this is actually like the design model. It's like an, a flat image itself that the designer sent to us. And from that, we actually create it so that you know, it displays in your browser. And you can see that like, there are some differences. Like uh, It's not exactly the same. And you know, design is an ongoing, growing process. So things change along the way. So I'm going to run through like, a really simple example of like, how you know, that process happens. And in order to talk about how that happens from an image to code, uh, we need to talk about the building blocks of websites. So uh, there are three parts. Like most of us hear the terms like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript together with the whole like web development thing. Um, and what you need to understand is that uh, the first part is HTML, which we which is a markup language that we use to structure our content. So for example, like uh, the content of your article, the titles, images, all of that is created in HTML. And then you have CSS, which you can think of as like the styling rules, like how is your content presented, the colors, your font sizes, uh, how big is this image going to be, all that is controlled with CSS. And then there's JavaScript, which um, in its simplest form is used to add behavior or interactions to your website. So it interacts with both HTML and CSS to uh, create interactions. So if you've ever like, you know, press a button and something happens, that's probably JavaScript. So in the case of a sign up form, like this here is just, just an image, like how do we get from this to this, something that we can actually use and like, interact with? Um, and so yeah, let's just, I'm just gonna show like, you know, the different parts and how they kind of relate to each other. So this here is uh, the sign up form with interactions. Uh, and I'm just going to comment this out so you can see what parts, are, what parts come from where. Um, most of the time when I talk about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it's like, what's the difference? What, what do they do? Um, and we always start off with HTML. And this is, I think, the most underrated part of web uh, development because good HTML is really important. And what HTML does is that we, this, it enables us to add things like your forms or like your input fields, labels, titles, things like that in a very semantic kind of way. So I can look at the HTML, I know like, oh yeah, this, there's a form here. And then there's like, you know, a field set. 
uh, with a label and an input that takes in text, for example. And at this point, it, it works, like you have all this here, but it doesn't look very good. So that's when we add on CSS. So something, some things that we might do is uh, we might change the background color or, whoops, we might change the background color or we might change the layout, like, you know, maybe center it. Uh, or if it doesn't, still doesn't look good enough, then maybe we add your know, styles to the form and make it like prettier, <laughs> pretty much. And CSS is a lot of fun because you have a lot of creativity involved in doing things. So yeah, it works now, but then we also need to think about you know, how the user interacts with the form. So if, let's say you're a user signing up uh, and you need to enter a username and you have a restriction on how long the username must be at least, uh, we need to be able to tell the user, hey, your username is too short. So when it comes to things like that, uh, like we add, we use the magic of JavaScript in order to tell a user like, hey, if you know, my name, username is too short, please enter a longer username. And this is, uh, to, like, in my opinion, like the more interesting part of working with the front end web because it's not so simple as like, oh, making things look good, but it also needs to make sense. It needs to be useful to a user. And as a front-end web engineer, like a lot of the time, the responsibility to make sure that things interact properly falls on you. So yeah, it's, uh, it can be challenging at times, but it's also quite, like, quite interesting. So we saw how we use HTML to structure content, how you can use CSS to style content, and then JavaScript to add interactions. Um, yeah, so that's like for the design uh, process of how things get made. Um, I don't know, are people familiar with this? Like, if you've worked with designers before, yeah. Um, and then there's the technology side. So it's not good enough to be able to build something to, that looks good and does what you expect it to do. You also need to make sure it works nicely with your technology. So the web is a very egalitarian ecosystem. As long as you have a device and your device is a browser, you can access the web, which is pretty freaking amazing. But at the same time, different devices have different browsers. Like, you know, who uses, who uses Chrome? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are my favorite users because, you know, I also use Chrome, so I build things for Chrome. But then you also have people who use, like, Edge. And who uses Edge? Oh, yeah, <laughs> all two of you. <laughs> uh, um, and Safari and so on. So because there's so many different types of browsers, remember how I talked about, um, you only send like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, which is code, to your browser, and your browser is responsible for taking that code and you know, creating a website for you. And um, the thing is like different browsers are created by different people. You know, like H is created by Microsoft, Chrome is, like Google Chrome is created by people at Google. And because of that, they behave differently. So what, you may happen, what may happen is that, okay, well, I make something, and I test it in Chrome, it looks pretty cool. Um, and then two days later, after we launched, someone like writes in and say, hey, <laughs> things are broken on Safari. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and you can see here the sidebar that we had, that we could see uh, in Chrome is missing because um, it is, for some reason, Safari is not respecting the height of that sidebar and it's pushing everything off like that. So I'm like, ah. Uh. But we fixed it, it's fine now. Um, and with modern browsers, it's all right. Like usually it's not a crazy fix. But then, sometimes you get like IE8. <laughs> and, and we don't support IE8, but I just want to show you this to you because I'm like, oh, I don't want to fix this. Uh, um, and it's OK if you don't support it, but I have been in situations where I have to like, support IE8 for like, bank applications, and that was not fun. <laughs> but yeah, fortunately, uh, things are moving along pretty quickly now. So browsers do get up to speed on standards uh, a lot faster than they did before. So thankfully for that. But you know, this is just one of the things that we had to keep in mind every time when we're building things. Because we want to make sure everybody can use this in a reasonable way. Um, and in addition to different browsers, we also had to deal with like, different screen sizes. So laptops and mobile phones have very different screen sizes. One is like this, and one is like this. <laughs> um, and so uh, sometimes you have things like this, where you have a table, which looks great in desktop. Um, table, table, table. OK, there we go, table. But then you also have to think about like, what if someone on a tablet uses it? Like, does that still look okay? Still looks okay. But what happens when someone on a mobile phone looks at this? And if you if you maintain the table layout, it's going to get really really squished, and it wouldn't look really good. So instead, uh, you have to exercise a little bit of creativity and push things down so that it works nicely for a mobile screen. 
Um, so instead of having the three columns, we like push that data under each uh, like row here. So you get to you get to work with things like that, um, which can be it's like a bit of a brain teaser. It's like how do I maintain this information, but like also get it to work in a mobile form? And of course, we work with designers on this as well. So uh, it's lots of fun. Um, and then there's JavaScript. Like who here has tried JavaScript? Yeah, so I, I see a handful of people. Um, and JavaScript's interesting because like. On the web, or front-end web, you don't really have a choice. You have to use JavaScript because that's the only thing that your browser supports. Um, and that's OK, but it really doesn't help that you know, JavaScript is actually kind of weird <laughs> as a language. Um, <laughs> and it's weird for, the, for historical reasons. Like when JavaScript first, was first created, it was created in 10 days before it shipped to Netscape. So it's got a lot of historical baggage. Uh, but just to like, show you like, why, why, is this, like, uh, why is JavaScript weird? So, Let's say I have Ruby. Uh, Ruby is a pretty, it's a pretty reasonable language. Uh, in Ruby, I have, like, you know, for example, division. Division works great. But then, uh, what do you think happens when I divide by zero? Error. Yeah, er an error. An error is reasonable, right? You'll be like, uh, you try to divide by zero. That's not legit. Too bad. If you try to divide by a string, it's like, uh, you can't divide by a string because a string can't be a number. I don't know if you all can see this. Oh my god, no, you can't. <laughs> Yeah. OK, anyway, uh, just know that's just an, er an error there. I'm just going to like bump this up. OK, no, that did not, that did not work. <laughs> um, so OK, Ruby's reasonable. It's good to know like something went wrong. But then let's say you end up with JavaScript. And then you have, let's say, you know, uh, let's say your regular division works fine, great. So far, so good. But what do you think happens when you divide by 0? Undefined, maybe? Some? No, yeah. So <laughs> 42 divided by zero in JavaScript is infinity. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, why? Why? Um, and there's, there's actually like a reason behind this. Is, is because like the way that JavaScript decides to deal with floating point numbers kind of makes it uh, seem as though, OK, well, you're kind of tending towards infinity when you divide by zero. But I don't fully understand that either. <laughs> and, and then what happens when you divide, like, you know, when, you, when you do um, negative 42 <laughs> divided by zero? What are you going to get? And I was like really amused because it's actually negative infinity. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what, what happens when you do infin infinity minus infinity? Like, you know, are you going to get zero or something? Like, how does that work? It's like, no, it's not a number. <laughs> and, and JavaScript is kind of funny because uh, like not a number uh, actually just means that, oh, you try to do an invalid mathematical operation. You are a bad person, so I'm not going to give you a number. So here's not a number. <laughs> So you get all this like weird quirkiness, but at the same time, like JavaScript is a bit of a misunderstood language. Uh, if you take time to like figure out like the quirks and why it's like that, um, it's actually a really powerful language because everything, literally everything that you see on the web, is powered by JavaScript. Like this presentation is actually, you know, a website. It's it's built of the web. JavaScript's powering it. Like this REPL here, this console, that's powered by JavaScript. So any games you see, any 3D like crazy stuff that you see. All that is powered with JavaScript. So it's a really powerful language, very versatile, does a lot of things, but often misunderstood. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and then like my favorite thing to do is like, you know, uh, what what is what is so you have type so type of, yeah, in JavaScript and it tells you the type of a thing. And then if you do like type of not a number, <laughs> guess what type of not a number is? <laughs> it's a number. <laughs> and I'm like, but it makes sense because you are using not a number is returned in place of a number, so it's a numerical value, but it's like it's an invalid numerical value. So, yeah, JavaScript. Um, but it's a great language if you get used to it. <laughs> so, for those of you who are you know considering like you know why would you want to do front end web, um, there are, there are a lot of reasons like why I love it, like why I chose to do specifically front end web. And the biggest part is because you know you have this like creative thing combined with like a technical thing, and because of that. You get to do a lot of crazy stuff. Like, just there are just so many possibilities. And you know, my favorite example of like you know a thing that you can do with JavaScript is this, and it's called staggering beauty. Um, <laughs> this is all it does. And if you shake vigorously, like crazy things happen. But I'm not going to show it because like it has flashing lights. I'm not sure like, and it's kind of loud. But yeah, if you want to like, look it up, you can look it up. But you, why? Why would you do this? And it's because you can, and it's actually not trivial to be able to like create this kind of behavior. So, yeah. Um, and 
in my free time, I like to create like what I call screensaver art. And this is all in JavaScript. It's running in the browser. So you can do this with the web. And you can share it with anybody because you know, it's accessible. And then, there's, uh, and then there are people who really push the boundaries of CSS. Like these are like single diff uh, art. And it's literally like one HTML element. So everything that you see, like all of, like all of this, is created with CSS. And it's pretty freaking amazing. Like it's just pure CSS. It's just literally one div and like some pseudo elements. And all this here, like all is created with CSS. Like I can't even do this in Illustrator. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. You should check it out. It's called single a uh, single div. And then um, yeah, and like I said, the web's for everyone. Anybody can publish to it. You don't have to have a device. You don't have to pay money. You don't have to be like an Android user to be able to use it. Anyone can use it. And that's I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and also, it has a very low barrier to entry. So if you've never done web before, a good place to start is HTML, CSS, because it's, um, it, it doesn't require you to like, know too much syntax. But at the same time, you get like, very quickly get results. But at the same time, you know, there's also a lot of room to grow. Like from HTML, CSS, you can always add on JavaScript and you know, do crazy things with it. So there's just a whole realm of possibilities there. And my favorite quote about front-end web uh, is this, which is uh, from CSS Tricks, Geoff Graham. Um, and he says, the practice of front-end web development is similar to playing the bass. It's easy to learn, but difficult to master, which is kind of satisfying. It's, it's, it's a lot to, there's a lot to learn. But at the same time, you know, anyone can start, get started with it. So yeah, with that, um, come to the end. <laughs> Um, you, can, you can find me on, on Twitter here, and then there's links to the slides at the bottom if you haven't seen that, if you want to look at pretty weird things like staggering beauty. And yeah, thanks, thanks all for listening. I'm going to hand it off to the next presenter. <laughs> Who's next? Woo! Okay.